I guess uh, this is the last podcast in this studio, guys. Oh my God. This is uh, interesting, uh, to say the least, but I guess the time has come to say goodbye to this studio. Well, bittersweet so feelings. Much. Yeah. Yeah. We, no. had, we started with, with no pictures, and now we got... Yeah, we pretty much had... Now, we had Goku and Vegeta at first. <clears throat> The whole mind. Yeah. So you say you started watching the new season. You liked it? Oh yeah, I got back to the violence. Like okay. <laughs> like uh like the, the, the still like the friendship the friendship like aspect is still there, but the fights are getting really good. Oh <laughs> the my God. fights are getting really good. And you don't watch it, right? No, yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't I don't even know what you're talking about. My hero academia. Okay, no. So, you don't watch anime at all, do you? Anime, I, I love Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, the other day, I was <clears throat> my partner's like, if you can get an anime tattoo of anything but Hello Kitty, and I was just like, I think Sailor Moon would be my jam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with that, so. <laughs> I watched Sailor Moon because it came on right before Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, hey, these chicks kick butt, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not warm up for the 30 minutes of screaming and three punches? <laughs> 100%. Um, what what would get you uh, into anime? What would get me? Yeah. Would be, um, like, would it be a good story? Would it be a good the action? Like, yeah, a little bit of both. Know? A good story, good action, and I thought that you know, watching Sailor Moon from the very beginning when I was a kid, um, and then you know later as a teenager, and they're still coming out with like new ish episodes. Yeah, they kept me hooked for a long time. Plus, it's like the animation is so pretty. Like, it is. Those it's chicks like kick butt too. Yeah. And sparkles <laughs> and, yeah. So I totally would get a Sailor Moon tattoo. Demon Slayer. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the, it has a decent story. Animation's really good. Mm -hmm. Demon Slayer. Sparkles. You know, I'm biased. I'll say My Hero. Just okay, cause, yeah. Just because, like, there's a, there's a good story behind it. You get action. And they also give you sides of the villains and kind of like why the villains are doing what they're doing as opposed to just like, Oh, these are bad guys, and the bad guys are here to just do bad stuff. You know what they, I mean? They're trying to make me sympathetic for the villains, but I'm like, mm. villains are people too, <laughs> or demons. I don't know. Uh, the, nah, in uh, in in, um, in my hero, the couple of them, I'm just like, mm, no, no, I'm not getting behind this, dude. <laughs> you you've done some sinister shit. Like some, who? Shigaraki's done some sinister shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I know he has like a tough, like a really tough upbringing, and I know his situation was. Like unfortunate, but my guy, you decimated two cities. Like, it's legit <laughs> two yeah, cities that don't but exist. Anymore. He was he kind of got like what Stockholm syndrome from like a dude who just destroys a bunch of stuff to kind of fill you in. So like he was raised by a monster. He was raised by someone kind of like Diddy in a okay. way, you know, just manipulating people. But and, but this is before the Stockholm syndrome, dude. No, no, no. It's been it's day one. He had him since he was a kid. You're right, but the 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 city that he destroyed. This was they showed this but, before they started like telling us. Yeah, but what I'm saying is he was vitified. he was he was he was groomed into this position. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. I still can't get behind it. Like, you're a sick fuck, dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just catching up, dude, and I know what he does. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, nah I get it. All you had to say was Diddy Fi, and I'm like, okay, I understand you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor guy. <clears throat> Man, no, like, everything that keeps coming out about that is, like, crazier and crazier. And but I, the I, memes are fire, though. The memes are, <laughs> oh, they can't stop, won't I stop. I love it. Take that, take that. <laughs> <laughs> no, me and one of my good friends have been sending memes to each other back and forth. He's like, dude, I just went on a THC infused, like THC induced rabbit hole about Diddy. Oh, you can't and do that. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, that's your mistake. But second, keep ta keep talking. What you learned in here? <laughs> I, I, go ahead. I've seen I've seen so many like same I've done the same thing I've seen so many they need to lock J Lo up too I'm like J Lo <laughs> what's going keep on keep those here? baby oil jokes coming <laughs> oh my god as soon as they said baby oil he was guilty yeah, as soon as they they told the amount I was like lock them up dude I don't know yeah. what you mean <laughs> Costco sells them in bulk guys <laughs> Costco even came out and said like we save receipts dude <laughs> don't don't, don't, lie, don't put this on us <laughs> yo um, 
Who was it? Uh, Josh Johnson, I believe his name is. He's a comedian mm-hmm. that's on YouTube. I don't know if you guys know who oh, he yeah, is. Yeah. But he was talking about, he was like, he just told his little skit and was like, if I go to someone's house and I open the bottom cabinet for whatever reason, I see three <laughs> bottles of baby oil, I'm like, oh, they some freaks. Thousand? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what are you doing? <laughs> Man, it, Diddy's lawyer said that they were buying stuff in bulk. I was like, dude, like you said, bulk of baby baby oils. Like <laughs> Nothing else is bulk. Just baby yeah. oil. Yeah. Matter of fact, I I have I have a brother with a newborn baby. I asked him how much baby oil is he used. He said he's like not nah, not much, honestly, which means that stuff lasts years, dude. What are you doing with it? Yeah, no, nah, that's it's us. Um, I do feel sorry for all the victims. I will say that um, as as fun as the memes are, um, you just like you you got to feel a little bit for the victims, just because that's messed up in my opinion. Yeah, it definitely is. It may, it makes it tough to laugh, but it all that's the one part about it that makes me feel bad. Like, yeah, <clears throat> like I know there are victims who have to relive this and see these memes play out. But whenever there's a perp running from a cop spraying himself with baby oil and then slides across the floor on my phone screen, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the only way I can digest news is through a little bit of humor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially like this, like terrible news. Like, give me a little bit of humor mm-hmm. with it. I know that it's hard to laugh when you know things are just terrible in the world, but just just a little like tiny silver lining is all I need. Yeah, yeah. it is funny because like the older generation say our generation and the generation of uh, after us are hard to like. Like we we don't empathize as much as them, but. Our whole life has been 9-11, school shooting, like... Pandemic, least, yeah, uh, economic just, collapse. We, yeah. we just see this. We're just like... And it's not just the news. We don't just see the news's point of view. We have social media. We have survivors' point of views. We have... So we're real, like, numb to that stuff. And also we've seen, like, I feel like a lot of corruption and things go on and a lot of people not get punished for it. So it's very much like... What are we going to do about it? Not a dang thing, but sit here and just laugh at it, because that's all we can do about no, it. No, I did get punished. Did oh, yeah, he, Diddy no. and R. Kelly are doing, doing jail room concerts for honey buns and, <laughs> and moon pies. In a <laughs> Maybe a little bit of ramen and cigarettes on, oh. on that. <laughs> Man, you can't touch with ramen anymore, either. Y'all hear? Y'all, well, yeah, ramen super hear? recalled. Yeah, what? Yeah, super Ooh. recalled. Yeah. Ooh, that's ramen cool. Andrew's going to hate that. Man. Yeah, and it's like bad. There's been like eight deaths because of yeah, that one. Yeah, and kids. Kids have died from this stuff. Oof. Like, like, yeah, that's, there's, that's there's like some bacteria that's in there, and you can't see it, but whenever it's... It's like heated up, it activates, and it just like mass grows. All right, I'm gonna have to look into this because now I'm really curious. But um, one of the (laughs) it also reminds me. um, Let me shift this a little bit. But um, there's a brand called Nongshim uh, Ramen. Mm -hmm. It's like in a red packet. I don't remember. I I don't remember if it's like Korean, Japanese, or whatever. But they're gonna come out with a uh, whole ramen restaurant dedicated to it in K Town. Yeah, like what isn't in K Town right now? Yeah, no, that sounds dope. I I've never, I've never heard of this brand. Uh, it's a good one. I so grew I grew up, up really, really poor. So all we had was uh, Marishan. Oh yeah, Marishan. It was one or the other, <laughs> and that, you couldn't go any other way. Oh like, my god. What were you gonna say? I I eat Marishan so much in college to where they just make me sick thinking about them. I used to love ramen too. Dude. I don't eat the chicken flavor. I don't eat any other flavors, just the chicken flavor. Nah, my mom's Asian. She gives me the better stuff. Uh, do you guys have you guys ever put an egg in your ramen? Like I'm, cook it yes. with the egg? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, my mom is Asian. We've done this. <laughs> She's like, isn't that what I just told you? <laughs> you know, I just felt like that was like the extra like poor man secret. Yeah, like, yeah. If, like to make it really good, you throw the egg in it. So I didn't know if you yeah. knew that, you know. Of course. Uh, dude, I used to I used to throw the egg in it and then my grandma used to have these like chicken things that you can bake on a skillet and they were already cut so I'd make the ramen and then set it to the side and then I'd make the chicken thing and then uh, put that like and just stir it all up yeah that sounds good right tell us it's like tell me that you've been broke without telling me you've been broke (laughs) 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 we've lived that life when you're tired of drinking just water and you make sugar water (laughs) (laughs) I remember, uh, so uh, in high school, I never had money when we went out to eat, and there was this place called Steak and Shake, 24-hour spot, and we pull up, and everyone would get like sodas and stuff. I would get water, 
uh, the sugar packets on the thing. I was like, can I get some cherry? So I could put it, mix it in with my water. So I got like some cherry sugar water. That was that was my <laughs> poor man's drink. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. fucking funny, dude. <laughs> I used to do it, but with lemon airline. <laughs> Both of those are valid. <laughs> I can't say I've ever done that, but <laughs> maybe with like sparkling water. But no, I used to, I, I used to, I used to do that shit a lot at home. What? <clears throat> Get a lemon, cut it open, squeeze it, and put some sugar and water into it. And then... It's like a poor man's lemonade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of sugar and water, man, let's uh, let's get on some fight news. Let's talk about some fight stuff. <laughs> the sweet science. The sweet, the sweet science. science. <laughs> where, where are you at? Uh, have you been keeping up with like UFC and all that stuff recently? Yeah, I have been. Also, I am wearing my CJI shirt. <laughs> oh, you finally got it. <laughs> yeah, I finally you know, got it. Yay. I can't. I can't show it to the. Was thing. it? Was it Josh? Yeah, my yeah. buddy Josh. Shout Thank you, Josh. Josh. I really appreciate this, and <laughs> it's got a whole like graphic in the back too and i put it on and andrew's like looks like two dudes like doing something that they shouldn't be doing but i'll show that to you guys later that sounds <laughs> but it's like- not though because it's like if you know you know but i guess not a lot of people know <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, Craig Jones probably put a little secret, like hidden meme in there. Somewhere. Yeah, it's like, like two like, shirtless dudes. Like, graphic. I love it. I, I love mean, it. I would definitely wear it like without this because I mean, it's a little chilly this morning. Yeah, and I felt like you know putting on some cholo vibes this morning. But um, yeah, I would rock it without this. It's like if you, um, yeah, it looks like two dudes doing some. They're both shirtless and. He loves Nogi, so. So it looks like, I'm assuming it's him in a Speedo. <laughs> I'll let you see it. <laughs> but yeah, I've been keeping up with, uh, definitely been keeping up with the UFC. I think as we speak right now, um, the uh, fights are going on. They're in France. Oh, yeah. I yeah. That. Yep. Mm. <clears throat> so that's happening. Today? I don't know. It's an off week, so I didn't pay attention. <laughs> oh, no. The headliner is um, Benoit Saint Denis okay. and um, Reno, Renato Mocano. So that should be a banger. Saint Saint Denis fought um, fought Poirier last. Yeah, yeah, he? he did. Yeah, he was he was doing good. Dude. Like he he has some fucking skill. He does, he does, and he's like I don't know, ex French special forces in their army or navy or something. So after that, uh, he retired from that. He's uh, up there fighting. So should be a good one. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm looking at the fight card right now, and I don't know any of these names, and they all seem to be like. Uh, you know, lower on the rank numbers. And but they're numbers. also very, like, it's off um, fr- uh, French fighters. French too. fighters, yeah, that, maybe that's why. Um, <laughs> but that's why. The white flag wavers. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think the next time I was going to pay attention, I think it was the next week, 307. Yeah, that was when I was going to pay attention. Alex Pereira and Khalil Roundtree is the main. Oh, oh, man, Khalil coming back from his, like, suspension. I haven't read up on what happened, but I know he, like, self-reported. Uh, they found something, and um, he dropped he dropped positive for something, but a very, like, minuscule amount. I haven't read up on what happened on for him to be allowed to come back to fighting, because it seemed like a very short suspension, if so, you've heard about so that. So, do you know about it? I don't even know. <clears throat> from my understanding, I don't remember what it is, but it's something that doesn't even uh, actually help you yeah, at yeah. all. It just, it's just a banned something that UFC mm-hmm. had. So I think the situation was, it was he got tainted supplements, found out about it. Like He was, he was told, hey, you could take something. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was given to him by the UFC. It was something like that. Yeah, or somebody like affiliated with. Yeah. And um, yeah, he ended, I just remember he like self-reported and was like, this was given to me. I had no idea. Yeah. But then, you know, all the trolls in the comments be like, you know, why are you taking that? Or something about, you know, yeah. performance uh, enhancing. If I don't think he should have got suspended if it was given it given to him by someone from the UFC or an affiliate, uh, affiliate yeah. you know. That's that's bullshit. And especially but, if you kind of like self report, like mm-hmm. you go into because you're not hiding it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm not trying to just juice up and then snap back in here. So yeah, right. and then honestly, Khalil Roundtree doesn't really need steroids. No. <laughs> like if there's like a steroid for super cardio, I could see him maybe taking that. But like for strength, and he doesn't need that. No. Yeah. But that should be a good one. I'm looking forward to that one. And I think um, we've got uh, Raquel Pennington and Juliana Pena running it back for Mm. the belt. Um, Should be a fun fight. I do really... 
I don't know. I'd like to see more depth in the 135 division. It looks like it's only the t- the only three or four 135ers that are always like fighting or making the news after, especially after uh, Nunez left. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're, they're still afraid. Like Nunez had was like the boogeyman. She had That's people right. afraid to come outside. But now we have Harrison and uh, possibly take that um, place. I don't know why. I just don't think she will. I, I like. I know she's great. I've seen her fight. I just don't think. I don't know. I don't think people like after dealing with Nunez for so long. I don't think the people in the UFC are that afraid of her. I don't and, know. I don't know. And she, uh, she just seems. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think her ground game is going to be her weakness here, just because a lot of these girls are great with jujitsu, and she's kind of stiff. I don't know. Yeah. She relies on, I mean, she is an Olympic gold medalist in judo. So, you know, that is definitely a strength and a point that she relies on to get her through to especially get people on the ground. Cause I have seen her fight too. And you know, it's a bloody, you know, it's a bloodbath by the end of it. She's <laughs> huge. Dude. I know. I know. <laughs> she is jacked. Like I would not want to meet her in a dark alley. No. She's like stars and stripes. Yeah, oh, that's you got character watch from my, my hero. hero. Gotcha. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll pull up a photo just so you can see what she, Stars and Stripes looks like. But, but. I, I don't know. I, what, what I was getting at, I think she like, I think she has a good judo and like she's like great in most areas. But I think I think there's openings for a lot of these girls on the ground just because. I've never really seen her. Like, I've seen her get you to the ground and maul you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's that's what I'm saying. I feel like that's all I've really seen her do is just, like, go to a ground and pound. Yeah. And I haven't seen her really, like, do any jujitsu or... Her stand up's good too. I think I, I'd I'd rather I'd rather deal with her on the ground than get punched in the face by her for real for Oh, months. okay. That tracks. <laughs> yeah. That tracks. <laughs> yeah. Just just a jacked blonde woman who's ready to kick ass. Like <laughs> Yeah. She released a video trading judo with uh, Alex Pereira, didn't she? I uh, think so. A couple a, a couple know. months ago. They were doing some cage work. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. It sounds familiar vaguely, but, you know, I got a lot come across my feed these days. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I have the most random shit come across my feed. No, no, she threw the shit out of Alex. <laughs> she threw the shit out of Alex. You know, speaking of that, like, do you think Khalil, we we all, Harold Khalil is a great fighter. Do you mm-hmm. think he has what it takes to take down Alex Pereira? I don't know. It's really hard to say. I mean, even... But, even the giants fall sometimes, but you know, he's on a, he's on a momentum. He's on a streak right now. So I don't know. I really, I don't know. I okay. just really don't okay. know. I know Khalil is probably, you know, he has really strong discipline. So I'm sure he's like in the gym and, you know, working on his recovery, doing what it takes. But yeah, I, I just really can't say okay. <laughs> at this point. <clears throat> Alex is like like people just think Alex is all power, but his fight IQ is is it, it's really high. Yeah, despite what like people think, um, but I do believe in the sport saying any given Sunday, anyone I I think anyone can beat anyone. I, it's just a matter of what person shows up to the mats that day. But overall. I think Khalil's gonna. I, I think like someone needs to take Alex down. Someone has to take Alex down, and I don't think. Is he did though? Is he did, and then he ran up to the higher division. Is he? Is he did? But Izzy's ground game's trash too. <laughs> We're being rude. Super, super trash. Um, but I, I don't know. I just don't see Khalil Roundtree being able to do it. I, I think he's good. I think he's a, gonna, a tough person to be in that division. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's going to do it. He certainly has the work ethic. Yeah. 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 I think, um, yeah, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm a betting man, I don't think I can bet against Alex on anyone right now at the moment. Um, maybe John Jones if they somehow made that fight. But Alex would have to stay at heavyweight. He wouldn't have to. But. That's the thing. I that's another thing I'm thinking. If Alex goes to heavyweight and he doesn't have to cut, I don't know. And like it's no secret, those heavyweight most of those heavyweights are just kinda they don't have fight IQ. No. no. <laughs> they, it's like two gorillas just fighting in a cage. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> They're either yeah. throwing haymakers or like wrestling. Yo. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. John John Jones is the only one, dude. Don Jones is legitimately the only one. And I'm not going to speak on Tom Aspinall because I've never watched him fight. Mm-hmm. But everyone else, there's a reason those fights are so quick. They either gas themselves out or they just slang and bang them. <laughs> yeah. 
Yo, speaking of haymakers, did you guys see the Anthony Joshua fight? I did. Like he got he got floored. If you didn't see it, it's a boxing, it's boxing. Oh, right? okay. Anthony no. Joshua's a boxer. He's the uh, he's the one who beat uh Francis Ngannou um in boxing. Oh, okay. And, Damn. Um, All right. And it was it was just like I was hoping that what happened to him in this last fight was gonna be what happened with him against Francis Ngannou. Um because like it was just haymaker after haymaker and uh Joshua just kept getting knocked down. I think by the third or fourth round, they had to like they ended up calling the fight. Like he just got beat. Man, well, I'm not I'm not sure because a lot of like a lot of big boxers have been going down. Because I know Cruz lost recently. Um, Joshua lost. Um, Fury lost to Usyk. What I kind of knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Wait, but what um, about Canelo? I didn't. Canelo won. Canelo won. Okay. Canelo okay. won. Um, that was the same night as the UFC fight, so I like wasn't paying attention. Yeah, was yeah. that three oh six the same night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fear, which was stupid. I'm, I'm, go ahead. Sorry, I cut everybody off. No, I just I think there's another publication that's been kind of taking over, and they're forcing a lot of these American fighters to fight fighters overseas or different fighters, mm. and a lot of them have been like. Mm. <laughs> Pretty I, legit. I mean, I think that would be good for boxing because I just feel like for box for a while, boxing has very much been like we're gonna we're gonna spoon feed you to the fighters that we think you can win. Once you get your name, we don't really want you to have a tainted record. And so it's been like so they're giving them cans to fight. Yeah, pretty much, Plumbers. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I think like that's what the sport needs, especially if it wants to contend with any of the mixed martial arts, because I feel like that's more exciting. Go ahead. I think I think my favorite boxer is gonna do okay. I think a lot of them are in trouble, but my <coughs> favorite boxers will be fine. Canelo, he's proven he's mm -hmm. gonna be fine. Yeah, uh, Javante Davis, Javante Jav Davis has fought some good people, you know. Yeah. Um, and that fight IQ is fucking crazy, dude. His fucking <laughs> fight IQ is crazy. So I think he's gonna be fine. Everyone else, fraud watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's tough because especially like in the heavyweight division of boxing, there's not a lot of fighters that you can really like pick from that are you can say are good. It's kind of it comes down to again, kind of like with the UFC, who are the heavyweight fighters? You only got a handful that mm -hmm. you can really look at and go, hey, these people are good. These people are killers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? And there's so many boxers that usually it's like, who the fuck is this? And then he knocks someone out, and then it's like, oh, that's who the fuck. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They came there just. They came there to make a statement. You know, um, this is uh, switching over to one FC real quick. Uh, what Ooh, do you guys yes. feel about this whole thing with Mikey Musumeci and him losing his belt? Because I feel like it's kind of messed up. You told me about it in the car. I agree. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of fucked up, especially because like. Well, didn't he like cut, uh, try to cut weight and didn't make weight, got really sick, and then had to vacate the belt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but the scenario before that, he wasn't even supposed to fight this guy. He was supposed to fight K. Bertolo, but K. Bertolo pulled out, which is you fighting him at a higher weight at, to begin with. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, that's a little messed up. If anything, that should have been downgraded from like not a championship fight. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I know one FC has like a little different set of rules than UFC. I think. They would probably do the same thing if it was this was a UFC fight, though. Yeah, yeah, that was crappy. If but we're being real, though, he's it, doesn't he mainly do grappling matches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting his belt back in like a month. Two yeah, months. it's yeah. Mikey. I think he he can bounce back from this. He's young, he's healthy, and you know, let's hope he keeps on that up and up. He he's so skilled, and it's crazy because um, I always forget he has a sister. I always forget he has a sister and she trains too. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they train like pretty close. But something about having that sibling that does your martial arts with you just takes you to the next fucking level. The Rotolo brothers, Mikey and his sister. Um, there's two there's two more siblings that I can't think of right now, but they're like they they just always have someone to kind of play that back and forth game and push them. But I don't think there's anyone in that weight division, that weight area in one FC that's gonna beat Mikey unless the Rotolo brothers. But they're doing MMA, not grappling, you know? Yeah. Do you think you will see Mikey in MMA at some point? Because I mean I've been seeing how he's training. He's training with Mighty Mouse. I don't see why I don't see why not, but it's one thing to train, it's another thing to take a punch. That is true. Because mm -hmm. I'm training and I ain't taking no punches. So. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one thing to train and it's one thing to take a punch. Um 
<clears throat> that's what it, that's gonna what, what it's gonna come down to. As soon as he gets into those sparring rounds and decides like, can I consistently take punches or do I want to consistently take punches? But if as good as his grappling is, I wouldn't. If he if he if he was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I wouldn't question it. Mm-hmm. That's why I wonder why the Rotolas are doing it because they're so good at grappling and they're making their money. Like it makes no sense to be like, all right, we'll go, we'll fight. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like. You're already set. You're already good to go, especially now you're a millionaire. Uh, More avenues to bring in that money, I guess. I guess, but go ahead. You know they're going to feed them cans until <laughs> to build up their rigor a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and well, and then it's like, I don't know. Something something about the Rutolo brothers, like the money is nice, but I don't think they're really doing it for the money. I think they like the, I think they like the, I'm 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 fucking Kate Rutolo, dude. You're not gonna beat me. I think they like the glory of it all. I think they genuinely might like to fight. You know, yeah. so because I've been watching them fight each other for years on on IG, like boxing gloves. Like when they when they made the like switch to MMA, it didn't really surprise me. You know, but I think they just like to fight for real. I get it. I just at some point, you know. Enough money is enough money, I feel like. Yeah. It j- kind is of j- it, though, in this economy? <laughs> I mean, I get it, but, like, I, I think, like, Diddy's a prime example of, like, when you get too much money, you just start doing stuff that doesn't make Stupid sense. Stupid shit. And, and uh, Connor was a fluke. I don't think anyone's getting that kind of money through fighting ever mm-hmm. again. Yeah. I think Connor was just a... Connor was a one-time thing. I don't think that shit's ever happening in the UFC again. No. I, mean, I don't think he's coming back. I don't think... Mm-mm. No, no. There's no way. No. He's no. old. He's injured constantly, yeah. making excuses about his like big toe or whatever his mm-hmm. excuse Fuck was. I don't think that. he's coming back. He's a fucking... Cro- he's a cokehead. He's a yeah, cokehead. that too. No. <laughs> <laughs> can he beat me up? Probably, you know? Um is he on co- two things can be true dude You're that's so true <laughs> and that's why he's not coming back and then he wants to own he wants to buy part of the ufc they told him no so he brought bear he's like a 50 50 owner of bare knuckle. knuckle yeah yeah oh my gosh. Um, and he wants to fight there you know like he's in like he's just doing too much okay right? how much like over let's take bets on how much longer it'll take for him to like buy slap the slap um Ooh. <laughs> Which, by the way, I saw in the news, uh, get the uh, slap competition mm-hmm. gives you worse CTE than freaking MMA. <laughs> yeah, because MMA, you have a whole like body you can choose to hit from. I can hit you in the leg. I can Ray, hit you slap. in the side. <laughs> slap, the slapping one is just direct face hits. Speaking of that slap fight, dude, it hurts my heart to just see Pat, Paige Van Zandt just... Oh, my God. Is she in it? She yeah. Just, she's just... I, yeah, she beat somebody. I didn't she, know that she was even doing it. She did girl, bare knuckle Girl, she's fighting. doing everything for money these days. Yeah, she was doing bare knuckle. She, she did OnlyFans for a while. She went to bare knuckle fighting, and then now she's on the slap thing. And she then, also fought like in a boxing match, just some no name out of uh, England. I, I've on, seen that. Uh, that girl fans. beat her up, dude. <laughs> that girl beat her up. <laughs> and it was just kind of, I was just like, dude... Why did why did the UFC treat their veterans like they're they're because Paige Van Zandt was one of the first ones. That's her right. and Michelle Waterson. Mm-hmm. The, the karate I, like, I I feel like I hate seeing women take damage in sports in general. I know that sounds like like kind of sexist um, in the sense of just like I just don't want to see women beat up. Like, but we signed the waiver. I know, I know. So like, I accept it and I do. It. And don't get me wrong, yeah. I watch it. Uh, like that one girl who had the like big ass cut. Oh, uh, we gotta right. talk about the uh, UFC three hundred six. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was that was that was disgusting. Irene but. Aldana, what a gangster, man! That was terrible to watch. Like, she got did dirty for that one. Yeah. Man, I, and I think that was like the worst cut uh, on anyone's face in the UFC that anyone has ever seen. And yes, very much so. It was like, they, I think it was like 20 some stitches. Yeah. Across your face. Holy shit. I can't imagine. So I, I went through a windshield. Uh, I think you might know this. I know for sure you do. And that's like what the scars are on my face. And like when I was looking, I was like, that looks like when I looked in my face in the mirror before the ambulance showed up. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, that is not good. Like she needs to get that stitched up now. Norma Dumont's a heavy hitter. Both those ladies are heavy hitters, but yeah. she got her good. 
Uh, yeah, we gotta talk about UFC 306 yeah, because you know, I I feel you. Wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah, uh, Raul Rosso. I think he was the first fight to um, start off that card, and I don't know. I am not a fan of Raul Rosas. I think it's because like he is. 18 years old, 19 or, you know, whatever. And did you even try school? Yeah. right. Did you even try school? And bro, do you have teeth? I don't know. But um, I swear every interview he's like, he has to, has to wear dentures or something. <laughs> no hate, but oh my God. I don't like him either, but the chi wee wee thing cracks me. Up yeah. That time. one, I'll, I'll accept that one. But um, I remember his debut. He, he's the kind of guy that comes out swinging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yeah. right out the gate. But and I think it took another he lost to an unranked fighter that um kind of exposed his weakness to a fighter that has a little bit more patience and probably is, you know, has been practicing with someone who is like, you know, explosive right out the gate, that kind of thing. So it took one fighter to expose that weakness. I think, you know, if he's calling for a top fifteen fight, I think maybe he needs give him somebody in the top fifteen just to see. In I don't, I don't He's know about weight, you. Right? Yeah, yeah. There, there's like, there's like levels to like, sh like. I felt like I hit like a nat like naturally. I got a lot stronger in between the ages of eighteen and twenty, mm -hmm. and then twenty to twenty five, and then twenty five to thirty. Like that old man strength. I think it's something that you build up as a man throughout the years, and like. There's nothing wrong with him starting his UFC career early, but I don't think he should be trying to rush up the ranks because yeah. he's going to run into some high IQ fighters with a lot more strength than, than he can probably handle. Yeah. And I mean, if we look at the top now or the top few people now in the 135 who we got, like Marab, who just got the belt, we've got Sugar Sean, we've got Corey Sanhagen, and um, I don't know. Those are some yeah. Those are some really heavy fighters too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there's yeah, just those are the top ones that I can come off the top of my head. I'm pulling up the rankings right now so we don't mess Sam this up. Hagen, man. Um, I, yeah, I um, had the pleasure of meeting him in Denver, and you know, nice, really nice guy. Um, he's got done dirty by a couple of fights. I feel like the him and D, TJ Dillashaw should have been a winner or should have been a victory for Corey. And I think that you know, I can speak for most fans that say this, where it should not have been like a split decision win when, you know, I think TJ sustained a lot more damage from Corey, but mm -hmm. then, you know, he did express his dissatisfaction after the fact, like, well, I guess damage doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I think that after the Murat, cause I, I personally think Dana's sick that Rob's the champion. I think so too. <laughs> he is. Oh man. <laughs> He he he's funny. I think Sean is too. Unfortunately, is, uh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. Sean trolling us or is he really serious? Because I think low key he is trying to call three rounds for the fight, and I've rewatched the fight, and I don't think he. Won. No, he didn't look like he was mentally there. Yeah, yeah and I think that goes the same for um, the f fight before that Alexa too. But we can get to that in a second. Yeah. But with Marab, Marab was like, you know, wrestle it, out wrestled him, outclassed him in those ways i did not see sean like pulling out any win of any of those rounds maybe one but barely yeah i i think uh again i'm not a i'm not an o'malley fan don't like o'malley um <laughs> but i don't i think that rotator cuff injury was start, really starting to catch up to him um yeah it's no joke <laughs> and, and that's that's something hard to do like when you're dealing with a wrestler, like it's one thing to strike, that shit has to hurt. But when you're dealing with a wrestler who's pressuring you, putting you on your back, kind of exposing that weak arm, it's kind of hard. And I don't think he really wanted to be there either. Um, yeah. So do you think he comes back and win it? And he's going to be off for a year now, it seems like. No, I'd say a year, yeah. He's going to be off for a long yeah. time. I don't, yeah. I don't see a rematch happening, but... I don't know. UFC is very obsessed with their rematches. I just don't see this one happening. It didn't happen for the 125 winner. What was it? Pantoja and uh, Royval when they went and fought for the belt. Royval lost that one. But then like a month or so later, he um, like stepped in for somebody last minute. It's like, what? So there's not going to be a rematch? Like what's going on? Royval's my dog too. Yeah. My he's dog. out of Denver also. Also yeah. a really nice guy. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been a fan of his since he lost the fight to, um, to Moreno. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Which he lost it because he fucked his shoulder up. But yeah. personally, I thought he was winning. Mm-hmm. I thought he was winning leading uh, until the until the shoulder happened. But that's my guy. And I think I think if he gets his second shot, he's going to win. I think so, too. I think he'll come back better than he was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I, I don't know much about him. You need to do your research yeah, you on need to do raw research. dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's that Colorado, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't know. He's, I don't know how to explain it. He's just, uh, he's an excited. There's no dull moments in his fights, bro. Mm-hmm, for sure. Copy. Yeah, I, um, going back to Sean, I just, I don't know. It seems like he's salty. He lost, like you are saying. It seems like he's mad he lost. Well, well, he is, dude, but... He got he got fed he pretty much got fed to the grinder and he thought he was ready and he wasn't mm-hmm. and by the grinder I mean the almighty equalizer equalizer wrestling dude you can't like you can't go to MMA mixed martial arts and not have a wrestling background at this point in my yeah. opinion it doesn't make sense and to run from it like O'Malley has and like the jokes were funny when everyone was couldn't take you down the whole like. Like slapping the little doll and doing the cage work, like it was funny, but it's pr- there's multiple champions right now that have proved that if you don't have wrestling, you don't stand a chance. I think a good matchup will definitely be Sanhagen and O'Malley next. I think they're mm-hmm. the same body types, like both it. like five eleven can cut down to one thirty five. I know uh, Corey's pretty well rounded in both grappling and striking, and what I think Corey has the edge on is um, mental, the mental game just a little bit. So that would be a good matchup, in my opinion. I'm glad you said that because I 100% agree. Because, again, I don't like O'Malley, and I think that'll be the beginning of the end. (laughs) I actually thought O'Malley was going to be essentially the next uh, Conor McGregor. I thought he was going to be able to get that star power. That's what I don't like about O'Malley, in all honesty, because you can't, like... Despite what companies think, you can't groom. McGregor, that was genuine. He McGregor was so fun to watch because at the end of the day, excuse my language, he's an asshole. Yeah. Like, he's always been an asshole. <laughs> he Like, the stealing the bell, the shit talking, that all came naturally to him because that's him. Mm-hmm. Like, O'Malley... I, I, I don't know. I don't He's know. been doing some wild ass interviews to, about his personal life, and I'm like, let's lo- let's learn a little bit less about each other. Yes, <laughs> yes. yeah, and like that. That's what I'm saying. Like O'Malley's not like. He like he may be being honest, but he's not funny. Like mm-hmm. McGregor, McGregor situationally was funny. Sure. O'Malley's not funny to me. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and you know, I don't know. I, I'm still a little salty just how he did Aljo, and like you know, Aljo. <laughs> You know, it's for <laughs> what I like about Joe is that no matter what, I feel like he stayed true to who he was. Yeah, and I think like the fans wanted a little bit more of a show from him, and he's like, "That's not me. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna do what's authentic to me." And that's why I've always liked Aljo, and I respect him hands down. And then after the fight, he was like, "I'm taking it better than Aljo did. I'm not, you know, saying <laughs> he won. The better man won." And then like not even two days later he's putting up all these memes and stuff like I'm the champ I got the belt I rewatched it did a whole eight minute video on YouTube and was just like yeah I'm the I'm the champ the sugar commission takes the belt back and it's like <laughs> are you okay you, yeah are you okay <laughs> like are you okay sir yeah but got hit in the head a few too many times I'm not gonna lie I know someone I know someone that was surprised you probably enjoyed him getting his ass beat for five rounds who? His lady, dude. He talked a lot of shit. <laughs> she probably was like, she was like, oh, I'll kick him. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that you talked about Conor McGregor ever coming back. Um, no. I, I'm going to say he never comes back, and that's why Michael Chandler has moved on. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not fair. He kind of did Michael dirty, you know? Yeah. Holding up somebody's career for three years, anticipating a fight going on, like the ultimate fighter, both being coaches to promote this fight. Like what the, f- yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, me, that's dude. your boy. Remember? That's, that's your, your boy. boy. <laughs> he was dude. This last, like two business. years, this last like two years has made me like dislike him. Not mainly, not because the Chandler thing, because there was multiple points where the UFC was like, take another fight, dude. And you want to take another fight? He's like, no, I'm gonna wait for this one, and he—that was his choice. But the toe thing, the rehab thing, the—it's it, just always something with him at this point. And if we're being honest, he—when was the last time, like, 
When was the last time he fought that was like good and consistently fought? Like 2015. We're coming up on 10 years now. Yeah. I think back in, was it 16? No. When he fought Cowboy? Yeah, when he fought Cowboy. That uh, one, I think, was the last one he actually like put on a show. And I do want to um, also like touch on that too. John Jones. You think John Jones going down the same route? I don't like, like, everyone, he's the GOAT, quote unquote, but like, Seems like you're not wanting to fight Aspinall. I know. He's seems like you him. just want to get this last little feather in your cap and call it a day. That's what it seems like to me. It, so I, I kind of get where John's coming from, from the point in like, Stipe fa- signed the contract. The contract isn't void because you have an interim belt and all of a sudden you think you hold more importance. I had an injury. Shit happens. He had to have surgery. But if you want the fight... Wait for the fight. One thing John Jones has never done is ran from a fight. John Jones isn't afraid of Aspinall. Like mm-hmm. if we're if we're being real, like Aspinall's good, but part of the UFC is you have to sell fights. Um, John Jones has ended bigger names than Aspinall. John Jones has knocked out bigger names than Aspinall. We're, and we can go all the way back to like what two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and like no one's to say Aspinall can't do it. But why why does Aspinall's claim? To, and like if we're being real, the heavyweight is filled with bums, Aspinall, John Jones, and Stipe. If they had a contract already, why does he get to jump ahead of? But does anyone really ever? No one, at least for I'm gonna speak for myself. I did not want to see Stipe versus Jones. I, I don't think anyone does at this After point. After what Francis Gano did to Stipe. It kind of just showed that Stipe is a little bit older. It's, it's time for him to retire, throw in it, you know, go be a fireman. Like, no no disrespect to him. Mm-hmm. He's had his career. Hats off to him for his career. But I feel like he's done. Like, call it a day. Uh, I don't disagree with you because at this point, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Stipe is like 43. Maybe he's up 45. there. Yeah. yeah. He's up there. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. But, like, contractually... That's the yeah, reason. But it, that's what I'm saying. It's like you were saying cans earlier. They're just feeding John Jones cans. John Jones is going to go up and wait. Give them all cans. Like give them Not people. calling Stipe a can because I know he was yeah, going to say, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. What are, what I, like, I rubber I matches, know. whatever the case is, the match but, that you know you're going to yeah. win. The thing is, is like John Jones' last fight was versus uh, who was Cyril name? Gone. Cyril Gone. Yeah. No one thought Cyril Gone was a can, but now that John Jones beat him, he's looked at it as a fucking can. Which sucks because I'm like, I am mean? I like Cyril. And, <laughs> and like the the thing is, is like I'm I'm a believer. I don't like John Jones as a person, but I, I know what I see when I look at John Jones as a fighter. And like if Aspinall wants to rush his way into being – on that short, on that super long list of people who got put the fuck away, that's on him. But you know, I mean, you want it, the glory. It, it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Like after, after Stipe, John Jones isn't gonna go after anyone else. He's gonna, it's gonna happen. But you can't, you can't jump another man's payday because things didn't go in your favor. You know what sure. I mean? I've there. There's nothing John Jones has said that makes me believe he's afraid of that man. Except not taking a fight. <clears throat> How is he going to take the fight when he has <laughs> another fight already? Right. I'm just I'm, saying. I'm just saying. You know, it's like it's like one. Of, it's like one of those things. Like, why are you going to look ahead of what's in front of you? You know yeah. what I mean. Either way, we have. They have to. The, either the UFC has to pay Stipe out, which Stipe doesn't want to do. Stipe wants to fight, or that he has to wait. Okay. And who the fuck is Tom Aspinall? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You beat, you beat some cans in the heavyweight division, uh, the known weakest division in the, the UFC the whole time. Damn. You know. Yeah. Shut up and wait. Oh, no. I wanted to shift over to um, Valentina versus Alexa yes, real yes. quick. <laughs> that was a really tough one to watch. I mean, neither of them fought like champs in this fight. No. I don't think that Alexa was there fully and I think Valentina kind of took advantage of that and I going into the fight I kind of figured that her strategy was going to keep you know taking Alexa down 
And lo and behold, it was. And the whole time, it just felt like it was very much ground control, lay and pray type thing. There was, she wasn't busy on the ground. Alexa was down there, you know, trying for subs, trying for all of that. But, you know, it just felt like, you know, this was just kind of the easy way out. Their first fight, I thought they, um, Alexa had kind of a slow start and Valentina, of course, you know, came in like has a, you know, mentality that, you know, she's a champ. She's going to fight like one. I certainly think they both did that first one where Alexa exposed a weakness, capitalized on it. The second one was, you know, it ended up in a draw, which was very unfortunate. Like, why are we doing draws anymore? <laughs> it's so it's ridiculous. Overtime, sixth round. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's do Let's start in a six round sudden death match, whatever. But um, yeah, that second round or that second fight went a lot better than this last one. It's very unfortunate, but you know, I think she's taking she's taking the loss in stride. I don't see her on social media like you know talking shit. Yeah, and um, you know, she's just out there like you know it's over. I can like chill for a little bit now. But um, yeah, I think I think Valentina is just kind of entering her GSP age where she's <laughs> yeah. gonna start putting on a lot of boring fights because she she really has nothing to prove anymore. You know? I mean, she could move up. I figured, like, if she lost this fight the third time, she'll probably move up to thirty-five and try to challenge for that one. But I think, I think Manon Firo can put on a fight with her. I think that um, Manon is well enough of a well-rounded enough of a fighter. She's got grappling. She's got striking. I think she can expose some of uh, Valentina's weaknesses in their next fight. I think so. I just want to re go back here. The first fight um, between Valentina and Alexa. Great fight. I think like it was it was exactly what you're saying, championship caliber fight. Second fight, um, I think Valentina had a spot on as far as like they gave it a draw because it was a Hispanic uh, night or whatever. Um, I call bullshit, but you, yeah. you don't you you don't think I call so? bullshit. <laughs> you don't think so? I call bullshit. I, I just I just have this thing with the UFC refs and how they play things and sure. I just felt like UFC has been trying to like for a while now. Gain, uh, like gain our partnership with the Mexican community, the sure. Hispanic community. And I feel like if they had have given that fight to Valentina that specific night, it would have probably damaged the equity within that community. Oh. Um, even look at what they did with the spear. It was all, it was all catered towards the Hispanic uh, uh, culture. You know and it was I mean? awesome. The, the fight in the sphere, the graphics and stuff. I'm like, ooh, that's I, so cool. I think it was a waste of time and money. Um. <laughs> if they have the money to, you know, put it on, and if people have the money to buy tickets for them, whatever. Let, let them have, you know, let them eat cake. <laughs> My issue with it, can I, can I say this real quick? My issue was that, like, you give me two screens, you have this big, huge projector, you give me two little screens. Okay, yeah, Like, fair. make the whole thing the fight. I want to be in the ring with the fighters. That's what we're paying for. I was kind of wondering that, too. And it's like, you, yeah, it's cool. These graphics on the side are cool. Put those in between when they're walking out. But when the fight's on, leave the big screen. The whole thing needs to be the fight. And that was my issue with it. Right. And that's why I said the spirit was garbage. Those right? those tickets were expensive. Yeah. Because I looked at it out of curiosity, and I'm just like, who is shelling out a thousand dollars for like for Those all of this? Yeah. yeah. What were you gonna say? I really had nothing to say. Um, I I liked the sphere kind of. Yeah. Um, I, there there was certain aspects I liked of the sphere. Um, I do think that I don't think they'll be there again because I've seen how well. Maybe it was the card because O'Malley didn't perform. No. Oh, both the prelim fights. card was great. The prelim card was great. And then up to Ortega versus um, Lopez, then yeah. Speaking of that fight, you know oh, what's yeah. funny about that one, dude? Mm. He fucking woke Ortega up. He did. The, he, I love that. <laughs> I am such a Diego fan now. <laughs> he, he, the first punch knocked him out, and the second, because he was just, he, he threw the combo. The second punch woke him up. If he would have just hit him with the one and let him hit the ground, it would have been a done fight. It would have been a done fight. But yeah, that one, that was the fight that I was personally very much waiting for. I like Brian Ortega a lot. I think he's very well rounded, you know, as a fighter. But then you have Diego coming in hot, like coming up, the, soaring up these rankings, which is incredible. Good for him. And um, he kind of exposed Ortega and he his just, weakness. He also just likes to fight. He, he does. He's just like, I'm yeah. ready to bang, bro. And then he was, then after his fight, he was out there cornering Alexa, like <laughs> just put on, you know, his jacket and was like, all right. <laughs> You know, it's business now. <laughs> I, I love T-City, but I think it's, again, time 
but just like I said with Stipe, it's time for him to stop. Like he's he's getting he's gotten beat up enough times, and he takes damage. Oh he's yeah, a, he's a warrior. That's what I love about him. He's a warrior. He'll go out and he'll he'll die before he freaking gives up. Mm-hmm. So, like mm-hmm. shout out to him. But like when I think about his safety and longevity and his health in the future, I think it's time. Yeah, there's a there's there's a few fighters I think it's time for. Yeah. And he is definitely one of them. He's been around for a minute too. And you know, with the you know um, us being able to make more money in grappling, like there's a he has such a huge name, he can command a good dollar amount in grappling. Just switch routes, in my opinion. You think you think he's gonna beat these these high competitors in grappling? You think he's gonna switch know. and beat them? I think if like he focuses his time on it, yeah, I think he can. He, you know, he definitely has the endurance and gas tank to go, you know, three to five rounds with anyone in a fight. And that's, that's, yeah. that's taxing. That's tough. You got to have some athletic ability. And when you can specialize in not having to take punches and you can specialize in just honing one thing over and over again, I think, yeah. I think he has the ability to. You know, you're probably right. Cause I, he's not, I don't know. I think, I think the. I, I think the like the lower weights, like the bantam weights, I think they can kind of switch and take over. I don't think I, I don't think one eighty five and up can mm-hmm. um, in the UFC just because that's where the the jiu jitsu monsters are is one eighty five. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, since we're talking about jiu jitsu, let's uh, if there's nothing else anyone talks about, let's shift gears real quick because uh, we're close to that ending point. Um, this is. Technically, the last show in the studio. I know. What are you uh, going to miss about? Uh, <laughs> what am I going to miss? Yeah. Not a dang thing. No. No, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, I haven't even gotten there yet. I'm still thinking about editing the last episode that we did. Oh, and gotcha. like getting this edited and coordinating our final episode and how that's going down. Um, but yes, uh, I think I'm going to miss. I have to say, I'll miss that, like what this was. This is the first studio. We built it out for this. And like, it's, I say we built it out. It's my living room. Um, But, (laughs) you know, shout out to my lady for letting me uh, just keep our apartment like this, I guess. Uh, So yeah, um, I'm I'm just happy it was the first space. Like, you know what I mean? It's that first, like, settled. Like, because when we first started, we were like cramped in this small room. And I was like, man, I don't know if we're going to be able to stay in this for, for, you know, a whole year. But then, you know, we got this apartment and, you know, it just, it all kind of worked out. So that's good. Yeah. But uh, what I was going to say is like looking in, so looking forward to next year um, and looking back on this last year, what do you guys think you guys have learned the most through jujitsu? And, you know, what are you looking forward to? going into the next year? Um, I think I have really started to hit my stride on my blue belt journey this year. I know that, you know, it took a while after moving here to, you know, figure out like which gym I want to be in. And now that I found a home that I'm so, so grateful for, I think my game is going to, is evolving a little bit more, you know, especially being under the leadership that I am now. And I'm, you know, like I said, so grateful for the lessons I think next year I can really, I really want to turn it up a notch. I haven't had time for comp this year. I've just been so busy and bogged down with like my regular day job, but I'm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I might catch a wild hair and maybe throw in a competition this year, but next year that's going to be the year. (laughs) I say that all the time, but no, I really want to make it. Lizzie takes JJ World League by storm. <laughs> I'm about it. I'm In the Masters it. Division. Oh, are God. you looking at just JJ World League? Or are you thinking about IBJJF Worlds in August? Or what are we thinking? Um, I don't know. I haven't been the best fan of like the refing in the JJ World League. It's mm-hmm. definitely different from like Grappling Industries, Naga, and Fight to Win that I've done in the past years. So I don't know. I don't, the okay. yeah, the refing's a little bit different. It feels like JJ World League. They let their competitors like go to the very end, where you know an IBJJF and Grappling Industries, if someone is clearly in a sub not moving, then they'll call it. Mm, but JJ yeah. World League, I've seen people get like face cranked to the max. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. True. That's I, true. <laughs> <laughs> They said if he dies, he dies. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. That, you know, that's that's what it is. That's funny. What about you, man? Oh, what about me? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I don't know. There's a lot to look forward to. Uh, you know, this podcast is going to be, what, digital now? So we're going to be yes. like uh, digital and aspirant. So it's just going to be a new format trying to look at, you know, I'm excited to learn some new things and figure out how that's going to go. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't told everybody, but uh, Jay is leaving uh, SoCal. He's out. He's out of here. Uh, so... I just, I'm looking forward to the, um, I guess, the experience that I'm going to have in, in my new location with me and my lady. And, you know, we, you know, this is jujitsu aside, you know, we're, we'll be in Africa um, coming in next year. And then when we get back, then we'll settle down into our real place. So it's kind of like, it's just adventure time now, if that makes sense. So I'm looking forward to the adventures. Um, as far as jujitsu goes, I would say, you know, just learning. Uh, I, I think I lost my little drive for learning within jujitsu, uh, just in growing in the sense of like, there was just a lot going on in this last year that it kind of changed that. And I feel like I've kind of gotten back into the swing of things in the last few weeks. It's just like, oh yeah, this is, this is why I enjoy this. You know, this is what this is about. And I think the biggest thing that I would say that I've learned is like, Jiu-Jitsu teaches you everything you need to know about life, you know, um, in the sense of, you know, I just took a test, right, and I was worried if I was going to pass it. I didn't know how I was going to study or train for it, but I have studied and trained so much for for tests, so to say, and I knew that all I had to do was put the work in, and it would just translate, and that's the same thing with the uh, the test that I just passed, and the same thing with my competitions. Yeah, maybe I didn't get an A in my competitions. A would be gold medal, right? But I did put the work in, and I got a B because I got that silver medal. You know what I mean? And so I feel like jujitsu just prepares you to take losses over and over again, and to understand that the losses doesn't they don't define you, and they if you can look through the losses and look at how to get better, it's gonna shape you into a better human. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Jiu-jitsu is one of those sports where you can start at square one at any time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's acceptable, you know, and it's acceptable to, com- you know, continually get your ass kicked and then you just got to get back right back up again and keep it, keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree with that one for sure. DJ, you're up, bro. <clears throat> well, you've got a situation going. I know. Here. You got both hands tied up, bro. Um. Honestly, this has been a pretty frustrating year. Um, I miss I miss being because before this happened, I was kind of in my I was in my flow. I was doing Muay Thai and then doing Jiu Jitsu class after, um, and I was forced to take a step back. But right now, just not not being able to train recently, I'm just super. Uh, super hungry bro um i miss i miss feeling like you know <laughs> i mean i mean i miss feeling like a fucking monster dude i've missed feeling like i did something that i enjoyed with my day you know and like don't get me wrong like i like I like hiking and walking, but I haven't been able to like throw weight around. I haven't been able to. Really you can't bear and bolo while you're hiking. Yeah, exactly, I can't. You know, and I wouldn't even try and bear and bolo a bear. No. <laughs> but but um, I'm just ready to come back. I have my plan for whenever I come back, and then you know, I just kind of miss the grind. I've met like it's been like five, six months now. So I'm just kind of ready for things to get back to how they were. It kind of like re-sparked my love for jujitsu because if if I'm being real, dude, I'm good off video games. I'm good off Legos, you know. Um, There's only so many walks around with the dog that can, I need that. (laughs) You know. That Neanderthal vibe. You're not mm-hmm. lifting at all right now, are you? No, it got to the point where like a lot of stuff, like they 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 ended up fixing some nerve issues that I had in here in my hand. Oh my gosh! Um, they had to take a, an extra tendon that I had from here because this one healed too much, and they had to cut some of it, and then it just didn't reach. So they had to take it from here and then put it in here. Oh man! 
Um, What's recovery time look like? They said four months. Oh my god. Yeah, they cut they cut my palm open right here and then to like down here. So it's I'm gonna just, be quite the scar coming when you get that removed. They they showed the they showed me I haven't seen it, but they showed me like with a pencil like where they were gonna cut me open. It's like a picture, but yeah, I'm just super ready to kind of get back to it. And then, funny enough, I don't know if he knows, but he like he knows Ross Ross fucked up, dude. <laughs> not only not only am I like healing, he gave me someone to put on my. I'm gonna fuck this guy up. He's on your shit list. <laughs> yeah, he gave me, Aww. and not, not, no, I wouldn't say on my shit list. You know, just like I see you, bro. <laughs> yeah, like he, he was talking, he, he was talking like he was gonna beat me up. So he gave me someone to do my push ups and be like, never in his, <laughs> never in his life. You know, he gave me some bulletin board material. So okay. I'm just kind of ready to go. Man. It looks like he's on both our lists then. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know. And like no and like again to Ross, it's not like like I know it's a friendly thing, but just because everyone's everyone's been coddling me and Ross is like, I'll beat your ass. <laughs> and I I respect that and I appreciate it. But it, it did get you like he said he was gonna beat my ass. That's the first person I gotta prove for. <laughs> you got That's the funny. pin already on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it is, but you know, I'm just I'm just ready to start the process to come back. Okay. That's it. You know, well, uh I'm gonna I'm gonna start up the positivity vibes and we'll close out. Um thank you guys for tuning in. Uh it's been you know, I'm positive that you guys have feel like I'm really happy and excited that, you know, we got viewership and we got followers and you know, it's been a fun journey. And uh yeah, we going we gonna keep doing it. What we say? We we'll say a thousand more, something like that. A thousand episodes. Oh yeah, two thousand. Two thousand. We're going. We're going for one piece numbers. Yeah, yeah, one piece. All right. Yeah, yeah. So no, I'm positive. And again, you know, uh, positive that I'm that I'm alive to just keep striving, you know, and just you know pushing forward and learning. I love sitting here and chatting with you guys. You guys are so much fun, and you know I hope we can keep this dynamic going digitally. And you know, like I said, I'm always down to do like a digital podcast. Um, yeah, and definitely going to be visiting in the Bay Area too. I do like visiting. I do like the Bay Area. I've got family up there too. But yeah, I'm, I am excited for the fans and the followers that we have, uh, you know, amassed over this time. So can't wait to see it keep growing. And uh, for me, you know, I, I've said it a, a few times. I think I've said it the last three times. But um, my positive thing is, like, this is something I've, I remember when you asked me about doing a podcast, I told you that I've always wanted to do a podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, so this was something that I got to enjoy and not only, like, enjoy it, but it's something I got to check off my bucket list. And I'm excited that we're, of course, we talked about taking a break for a little bit afterwards. Yeah. But I'm excited that we're going to keep going, and I'm excited for the progress that's going to be made whenever we come back. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to take a small break. Uh, just so everyone knows, probably it's, like, January into January, uh, top of February is when we start back up. Um, we're in, you know, we, we got three more weeks. As this being filmed, uh, we've already filmed the first episode that's going to come out. This will be the second episode after that. And then we're going to do the third episode sometime this week or next week. So we really only have three episodes left for this season. So, yeah, by mid-October, we're, we're going to be out of here for, what, a month and a half, two months? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we're gonna come back. DJ's gonna be kind of fixed, and <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. Kind of fixed. Kind of yeah. fixed. I think I think they said my fingers will start closing around November. Oh my okay. god, they have a timeline for it. Yeah, yeah gosh, maybe we do like a mid December just just for the fun of it. <laughs> well, I you do, know, like I do have a secret training arc that I'm gonna go through. Okay, as soon as uh, as soon as they're cleared to like, I'm cleared. I'm gonna go home for a week. Let's get um, it. Go train with my brother and let him put me inside control. Yeah, uh, let's let's talk about that. I want a road trip out to y'all because uh, I hear y'all want the smoke. Let's go. I've been resting up. I'm healing. I want all y'all at three crosses jujitsu. <laughs>
Every last one of y'all. We're going to clip this in the memory. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to clip this. You're welcome to come to Denver. <laughs> you want the altitude training. Uh, oh, Ooh. God, I don't. <laughs> I love it. I personally love it. <laughs> I, I played college football out there for a oh, yeah, you did, and yeah. I, that was the best shape I was in in my life, but the <clears throat> memories of just the fucking conditioning. conditioning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> PTA. <sighs> <laughs> oh God! I remember they had us do a hundred. They had us. Uh, they had us do a hundred and twenty up downs before our before our last like practice. Oh so we the first one we started off with ten, and then every day we did. I forgot how we did it. We just the, we ended at a hundred and twenty, and I remember he was like, "How's that feel?" And I thought in the back of my head, I'm like, "I should fucking kill you." <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. Well, it's signing out, man. It's, it's time. signing out. Signing out. You know, you got anything you want to plug? <laughs> no, just thought you can follow me on Instagram uh, at maybe underscore Lizzie. All right, you know what it is. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. It's been uh, it's been real. And if you want to smoke, even during break, hit up T, hit up J, and hit up uh, Ross. They'll be gladly they'll, they'll, they'll gladly take care of you. I'm still retired, <laughs> except don't, for don't anyone at Three Crosses. Like, and we're coming out with a timer for you guys. <laughs> I can't wait, dude. They already have a lineup for you, dude. No, I know, I know. I know. With y'all. Our, Archie's Archie's already planned your planned your visit if you ever come. I'm about it. We'll see. Yeah, you got a bunch of fat dudes waiting to lay <laughs> Well, I hope Not they got the cardio because I know how to deal with them. Make them man, I can't even say it right. Can't man, I'm already losing. I'll shut up. All right, y'all. We're out. Y'all stay blessed. <laughs>